You know, when it comes to habits, productivity, and even self-care, there are things that we can do that give us energy and things that can take it away. Lately, I've been thinking about all the habits and sort of things that I do in my day to day that make my life a little harder. And I've been paying attention to things that actually give me energy and make me feel more alive and excited and fulfilled. Some of these things are habits while other things are hard stops and barriers that I've implemented in my life to create friction to prevent the bad habit from doing things like taking over my time, depleting me of my energy, or just plain making making me feel like shit. So these are the 10 habits that have been giving me energy rather than taking it away from me. And before we get started, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, Copilot. When things get kind of busy and overwhelming for me, the first thing to slip is my exercise and my nutrition. So I was super excited when Copilot reached out so that we could start working on these things together because the really cool thing about it is that you work with an actual real human person to define and more importantly, reach your goals in a realistic, attainable way. When I got started, I had an onboarding call with my coach, Jill, and she really dove into what my lifestyle is, what my day looks like and where I sort of of struggle and after our call we decided to focus on three small goals which was hydration prepping my breakfast the night before and doing a workout with weights twice a week so you can start your workout on your phone or on your watch and you can listen to anything you want I'm kind of weird I don't listen to music when I work out I listen to YouTube video essays you don't necessarily need an Apple watch I got it because I want to track the activity, my heart rate, all that kind of stuff. And what's really cool is Copilot can track and analyze your movement so your coach can give you feedback and help you like speed up, slow down, or optimize your movement. But if you don't have an Apple Watch, it doesn't matter. You can just do everything on your phone and it will work with iOS or Android. And what's really cool is that you don't need any equipment. You can work out at home or at a gym. If you need extra support, you can text your coach anytime and they'll get back to you usually within 24 hours and your co-pilot coach will really work with you to tailor any exercise, nutrition, other, and any other goals to your needs and your lifestyle. For me, it's been a game changer in my consistency because it's created a form of accountability for me. So if you're interested in building new habits and being consistent with them, you can click the co-pilot link in the description below to get 14 days free with your very own expert fitness and health coach. I'll keep you guys posted on how it's been going. We love a consistent queen. Thanks, Copilot. The first thing I did was delete Twitter. Yeah, I'm not on Twitter. I never really have been into it, but around 2020, I found myself really starting to use it. One, to go check and see if Instagram was down, but two, to kind of see what people were talking about. It was starting to become a place to get news and also a place to spark a whole lot of outrage. Don't get me wrong, there was a lot of really cute dog videos on there too, but for the most part, it was just people being pissed off and arguing with each other. I just said I like apples. Everyone who likes oranges is so offended right now. Twitter just wasn't good for my mental health. It was taking up a lot of my time and ultimately it was just depleting me of my energy because I would get caught up in all of these people raging on each other. And quite frankly, for me, it was a waste of time. I still have to be mindful of reading the comment section on places like Instagram, TikTok especially. People are mean on TikTok. I don't know what's with that app. You are who you surround yourself with. So if you're immersing yourself in these conflicts and arguments online, it can really have a negative impact on your mental health, your mood. It can even start to seep into the way you think. I just noticed that it was not having a positive impact on my life, so I got rid of that shit. Habit number two was meal prepping. I used to be like, really consistent with meal prepping, especially when I first graduated university and started my career. Meal prep Mondays was one of my favorite things and slowly but surely that habit just for whatever reason started to slip away. I found when I started up my YouTube channel and got more serious about my business and social media, that would really take up a lot of my time. So I would really push things like meal prep and fitness kind of to the back burner. And over time, I was really noticing this increased reliance on ordering takeout and especially just rushing around in the morning trying to throw together these lunches. So I've made it a goal to prep not only my breakfast, 
the night before, but making sure that my lunch is packed and ready. Adding in that extra habit, taking 15, 20 minutes the night before, really just gives back to me in dividends because one, I can sleep in a little longer if I want to the next day, but two, I'm not rushing around almost in a panic every single morning trying to get to work on time and make sure that I'm actually nourishing my body properly. I was sacrificing starting my day off right and having a calm and orderly morning by either procrastinating or full on avoiding prepping my meals the night before. Habit number three that's really benefiting my mental health and giving energy back to me is listening to an audiobook on my walk to work. I walk to and from work every day and I've decided to embrace that time as me time. And it's time that I like to take to learn something new or just to simply listen to something that I'm interested in, whether it be an audiobook, a podcast. I'm taking a few courses right now, so I'll listen to the lessons on my phone. And I really like doing it while I'm walking because I feel like at that time I'm giving the book or whatever it is my full attention. I'm not really multitasking by like doing the dishes or cleaning, doing something else to sort of distract me from what the narrator is actually saying. And that's just time that I've taken for myself that I really enjoy. Number four is reviewing my daily calendar and writing out a three item to-do list. I don't know how I functioned without having a to-do list and a calendar, but in the past, I really just used to rely on my brain. Sometimes if my to-do list is too long, it can actually zap my energy. I get very overwhelmed thinking about all the things I have to do. So by setting a boundary of limiting that to-do list to three, actionable and achievable tasks in a day has really helped me sort of calm down that anxiety of, oh, I got to do this, I got to do that. There's not enough time in the day. How am I going to get this done? And if these things don't go in my calendar, then they simply do not happen. Writing out my to-do list every morning and checking it against my daily calendar has really just helped me stay more organized and ultimately helps me get more things done and accomplished in a more realistic timeline because I'm not wasting all this energy focusing on what needs to be done and then avoiding actually doing it. Habit number five is doing something right away instead of procrastinating. This kind of goes back to the three item to-do list, but it also really applies to things like emails and small like menial tasks. I try to do these things the day that I see them being requested. Otherwise, it just isn't gonna happen. Things get buried in my email inbox. I start to procrastinate and push back deadlines. And by that point, things will start piling up and then the to-do list becomes way too long and then I get overwhelmed and it's a whole thing. So a lot of the times, especially for smaller tasks, I try to get it done as soon as I think of it or as soon as it's requested of me. For me, I just know that I don't function very well knowing that I have a million things to do and not knowing where to start. So as soon as it comes across my plate, I try to do it, get it out of the way, and I can move on to the next thing. Habit number six is having one day a week of activity that is non-negotiable. I find as more and more has kind of been added to my plate, I do say yes too much, I gotta say. Usually the first thing to get sacrificed is my nutrition and my fitness. And the things that benefit my energy levels and my mental health the most are nutrition, and fitness. And I've tried telling myself that I'm gonna work out every single day for 10 minutes, it's only 10 minutes, just do it. But even so, sometimes it still just doesn't happen. So I found the key to consistency for me and to actually following through with a new habit, a new skill or anything like that is to start low and go slow. Viewing it almost like an appointment that I'm not allowed to cancel has really helped me actually build a lot of consistency with my fitness. And now that I'm using Copilot, it's been even better. Not only is it just time that you give entirely to yourself, but when you're physically active, you know, you sleep better, you eat better, you have more energy, you suddenly have more energy to do other things that may have been really difficult to do in the past. So for me, being consistent with physical activity is really important. Ironically, it's also the thing that gets pushed to the wayside first. So setting this boundary of either having a day or a few days a week of non-negotiable physical activity, I know it's gonna benefit me in the end, so I am becoming more and more open to making the time for it. Habit number seven is drinking water before coffee. You gotta stay hydrated. Number eight is setting time limits on social media. In particular, TikTok. 
Look, as much as I really love TikTok, I think it's a lot of fun. It is truly one of the things that really depletes my energy, especially if I find myself over consuming it. And then once you realize you have spent an hour or more scrolling TikTok mindlessly, all these other feelings of like, oh, I wasted time, other thoughts and feelings can often bubble up that further deplete us of our energy. Luckily, TikTok does have screen time limits and they've also added like snooze reminders. So you can set like 10 minute reminders to say like, hey, okay, you're done. Besides setting a time limit, the other thing that I find that helps so much in terms of social media, because for me personally, I'm not willing to give it up. It's part of my job and a lot of us just like it. It's fun, you know? How do you create a balanced and healthy and energy giving relationship with social media rather than one that takes from you all the time. My favorite thing to do is to create on social media rather than consume. And you don't have to be like a big blogger or in any niche, anything like that. But I do think the act of creating rather than consuming on social media is the best way to keep a healthy relationship and boundary with it. If I get caught up in watching stories, reading comments, and simply scrolling for hours, and actually takes away a lot of my creativity and my energy to, to actually create the content, which I love doing. So even if you're not a blogger, anything like that, just, you know, start, you can start a TikTok account or start an Instagram and create reels, share your outfits, share your makeup, your gardening, your recipes, whatever it is you're interested in. Getting into the habit of actually creating content and sharing it, not only is it so much fun, but you develop a skill set. you can often get to know yourself better, and you're sharing something with the world. Even if nobody really sees it besides like your mom and your friends, they are always your biggest fans from day one anyway. It just feels great and purposeful to be creating and sharing something. So that's kind of the relationship that I try to set with social media and I find when I get into the sort of habit of scrolling and only watching what other people are doing rather than participating in it in some way, that's when it really drains my energy and when it's no fun at all. Number nine is setting a fun money budget. This is a line in my budget that I create every single month. It's usually anywhere between 100 and $200 that I can spend on anything I want, planned or impulsively. This usually comes in the form of spontaneously going out for dinner, going out for extra coffees on the weekend, but it's essentially a line in my budget that I've allowed myself to spend freely on. You know, I talk about the importance of having a budget, spending mindfully, and knowing where your money's going, but that doesn't mean that you can't have some fun. These days, I'm not so much of a believer in deprivation, and I find that can actually be quite draining and takes a lot of energy to adhere to. You know, as disciplined as I thought I was being, sometimes it just flat out sucked. It just makes things a lot less rigid and really has been an energy giving source for me when it comes to my finances. I've often chosen to sacrifice living slowly in the name of the hustle. Now, sometimes I will admit that has gotten toxic and I have burnt out a lot more times than I would like to admit. And that's not productive either. So I've since decided to set some boundaries around my work, what I say yes to, and the breaks that I allow myself to take. Your girl is taking some weekends off. One of the things I find to be the most rejuvenating for me and gives me a lot of energy back is spending time with my family. And I didn't want things like editing or posting deadlines bleeding into that time. So a lot of times I will do things like batch filming, things like that, so that I know I can take the entire weekend off and just take all that time to recharge, rejuvenate. But I am definitely done sacrificing my energy and my time and the things that fill my cup in the name of doing more work that in the end ultimately probably won't be as high quality work. So I think it's important to find the thing that feeds you, that rejuvenates you and dedicate actual real time to those things. Rest is just as productive as any work can be. Let me know some changes and habits that you've been implementing to give you your energy back. Thanks again to Copilot for sponsoring this video. If you want to try 14 days free with your own Copilot fitness expert and coach, you can click the link in the description below. Thank you again so much for watching you guys and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.